Every single case has people. Victims, witnesses, complainants, suspects, informants, so we'll be talking to people and gathering information from people throughout every single case. No matter what case you can think of, robbery, sexual assault, homicide, kidnapping, even employee theft, fraud, you know, it's all wire transactions, but somebody's doing it and somebody's the victim. Since every case has people involved, we're gonna be conducting every, interviews in every case. Sounds very basic, but how does that highlight how important are good interviewing skills for an investigator? And so the next thing, the next logical lead-in is here is how do we get truthful information from people? And one of the things we talk about is human memory, extracting truthful recall. So at the same time we can think back 40 years and in, in, in good detail remember things, we forget where we placed our keys, we forget where, who we were introduced to. So memory is very powerful, yet it is also very fragile and very malleable, which is what we're going to be talking about during the session, is how we can maximize some of these strengths, but also minimize the weaknesses. So if someone just robs a bank and uh, they know that there's a good chance that they're going to get caught, um, or they just commit a homicide and they know there's a good chance they're going to get caught. They're going to have this plan in their head, oh, if I get caught, you know, I'm going to say this. And so when you ask them about that event, they're going to, they're, they actually experience that event. But you're going to see um, the, the way that they um, relay that event to you uh, more times than not is not going to be a lie, but it's going to be deceptive. It's not about asking questions, interviewing. Think about what Wes and James and Maggie have told you. It's finding the right topics to ask the right questions about. Long story about his deception there. They get up Friday morning, dad gets up at six, he says he comes downstairs, the baby's missing. Christy, where's the baby? She's right there, no she's not, my God, where is she? They call the police, they show up at seven o'clock. Tracking dogs find nothing, neighborhood canvas finds nothing, interviews are questionable. They contacted me out in Arizona and said, Stan, we got a, a type of Ramsey type of thing here, we need help. Would you look at the interviews? This is one piece of the interviews I've got that a Fox affiliate in Nashville has interviewed the mom and dad 24 hours after the disappearance. This is what's called B-roll, it's just extra footage. Prior to the media arriving, mom has written a press release, typed it all out. And it reads stuff like, our hearts are broken, her feet shuffle across the floor into the dance, her clothes miss her form, her bed misses her weight, her toys miss her touch, mother longs to hold a child to her breast, is she cared for her, is she loved, um, is, uh, what do you do when she asks for mommy and daddy, and it's just <whistles> all this big sob ringing story, right? At the end of the interview, just cutaway footage, listen to the reporter asked about the child. I might let mom get away with one, not three times. It's exactly what you asked Mike and what Jim was talking about earlier. Listen to mom, think of Susan Smith. We don't have a body, we know nothing at this point. She was like scooting and crawling. Now think of Susan Smith. No matter what stimulus you give the subject, they will always make the choice how they respond to the stimulus. You cannot, you can contaminate them with information, but you can't enforce them into an answer. You make the choice of responding to the stimulus. So one time I might. Now listen to two more follow-ups. She was a late developer like her own brother. She was a late developer like her older brother. Was. Was. It's two. She was just like him. She was just like him. My comment to the guys, she knows this baby's dead. She talks about her children in the past. In the past. A she mother never, and I just got chills down my back, a mother never gives up hope that her child is going to come back to the point of delusional. In my country, uh, since the mid-1980s, it is absolutely clear that investigators, interrogators, whatever you want to call them, are not allowed 
to suggest that they have evidence that they do not have. They cannot lie about the evidence. If the person that you're interviewing did commit a crime, particularly a very serious crime, they must be a complete idiot if they voluntarily choose to tell you about the, what they've done. It seems absolutely opposite to common sense. They're not going to tell you, are they? It's just common sense that they're not going to choose to tell you. However, what's the source that leads to solving of crime more so than any other source? Answer witnesses. I know, I'm not going to play games with you because I know you already know that, right? So, how do you get members of the public, witnesses, to come forward to tell you, the police, if you are in a country where the police are highly coercive? If you're in a country where the public do not trust the police, where are you going to get your witness information from that is the major cause of solving crime? That's what he was talking about, the problem with unethical behaviour. But this lovely quote at the bottom of the page, it didn't take much skill to beat a confession out of a suspect. That's just so lovely, that. So he was a real copper's copper, you know, worked his way up from the bottom. But he realized that we've got to do better than trying to either physically or psychologically beat a confession out of people. We've got to do better than that. That's what he said I did to do. I want to share with you quickly some fairly recent work. It's a body of research, it's not very large, from different countries, going on for about 10 years now, asking guilty people about what they intended to do when they were interviewed. <laughs> Only 20% of them said, I remember when I walked into that interview, I had firmly de decided to deny. And the common sense view is 95% would deny. Why, you know, why only 20% are going to deny? That's freaky. Because that, as I say, and you've realised, is the very opposite of common sense. Why would they do that? From, from a perspective of seeing these things, in micro expressions, it, it is a, a hard skill, but that is learnable. And within about an hour, everybody shows improvement. And over time, it becomes, once you get into seeing micro expressions, watching for them, it becomes one of those skills, just like listening. You hear things, then you start seeing things. Jessica fed leads to Nebraska and, and Cass County that they follow from Dallas to Detroit, the whole eastern third of the seaboard. 20 months they're following leads. Finally, they charge Jessica and her boyfriend, but not until Jessica calls the sheriff's deputy from the jail in. Wasn't even involved in the case. Called and said, they talked to him. Guy came and said, yeah, Jessica, what do you want? She said, I lied to them fellas. I said, why? She said, they didn't want to hear what I had to say. So I told them what they wanted to hear. And then 18-year-old Jessica said, I just didn't tell them what I knew. How critical is every interview? Shortcut one, what'll happen? Dismiss one, cruise through one, every single one of them is important. We do not win as interviewers. Who wins? Victims. Don't forget who we're working for. Their lives have been devastated. Their lives have been destroyed. And it's our job to make sure that they get justice and the people who victimize them are held accountable for their actions.